Thanks for waiting, everybody. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Attendance was 7816 The gate was $735,000. The uh, four people were transported to the hospital tonight, Herman, Riley, Danzig, and Andrade. They're all on their way back, and they're all fine. Fight of the night, <clears throat> Herman and Smith. Knockout of the night, Melvin Gillard. And submission of the night, Johnson. They all won $50,000, so congratulations. And yes, we had a huge debate uh, over who won knockout of the night. Was it Lawler or Gillard? Go ahead, John. <clears throat> if I could start with Rory, please. Uh, Rory, there seems to be kind of a divide among people right now. Some people say what you did was technically wonderful. Other people say it was boring. You weren't willing to engage. So I wonder if you could kind of break down uh, how you felt about your performance tonight. I think I did exactly uh, what I was supposed to do. I kept up my end, uh, and he's a, he's a counter puncher and a very powerful puncher. I, I was waiting for my opportunities, and he wasn't coming in at, at the right times, and he was, he was staying back. He wasn't engaging. Uh, I was playing my angles and waiting for my opportunities like I always do, and he's a smart fighter. I got to hand it to him. But... Uh, no, I, I felt I did the right thing. It's just uh, I, I think I might needed a few more minutes, and I think I would have had a, a good chance to finish the fight when I had his back. And one quick question. The jab obviously ended up being a great weapon for you tonight. Did you plan on it being that big in the game plan tonight, or did it just turn out to be working and that's what you stuck with? Yeah, I just, I just react to what's in front of me, and you know the, the target I was looking at, you know, the opening was the jab. Thank you. Demetrius, obviously, congratulations on your win. Uh, you know, in the build-up to this fight, you said that, that John's comments never bothered you, that, you know, he thought you were boring, but you went out there and put on probably your most exciting fight to date. So, you know, was there any, you know, did it maybe in the back of your mind factor in that you wanted to go on and put on something a little special tonight? Um, no, not at all, man. Um, like I said, it didn't bother me at all. My job in the gym is to train and train to finish. And you know what? The finishes kept coming and rising. I was trying to finish in the first round of the guillotine. And then I had opportunities for the Kimura. And then in the fifth round, you know, even though I was ahead on the scorecards, you know, I'm never just relaxing and just trying to coast by. My job's in there to finish and to push the pace. And it's so it, 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 it rise. And then I just took it. And so happened it happened. I was going to say, in twice, you know, round three, and then of course the finish in round five, you gave up position to go for a submission and, and, and kind of risk putting yourself in a bad spot. So, is that something you're conscientiously working on, like trying to make that change to not be conservative, or do you feel like it, you just haven't been able to get the finishes up to this point? I just think, you know, in a gym where I'm trying to focus more and always evolve on my game, where I'm using my wrestling to, you know, I'm a white belt in jiu-jitsu, so I'm just using my wrestling to get to the position to do the submission. So like I said tonight, it just so happened that, you know, the opportunity was there and I just capitalized on it. Usually when I fight guys, it's not there. They usually shell up and John Rogers doing a good job. You know, out of all the people I fought, he's the one guy who showed up in shape and never gassed out. He was always there every single, every single round. So credit to him. He's a tough guy. Uh, my question is uh, for Rory. Rory, you, you seem to execute your game plan, frustrate your opponent. Uh, what was your reaction to the fans booing you executing the game plan and winning? I didn't pay too much attention to it. I was focused on the task at hand, and I was waiting for the knockout to come. You know, I was, I was being patient. You know, I, I think I did the right thing. I wasn't rushing in like a fool or like an amateur fighter. And sometimes knockouts, you know, they take a little bit of time. You got to let it happen. And I wasn't forcing anything, and unfortunately I ran out of time. And Dana, if I could follow up, you have a couple of big welterweight fights coming up with uh, Condit and then GSP. Where do you see uh, Rory going next in that scheme of things? And, and what's your reaction to the fans booing that kind of uh, performance? Um, you know, we got to see how these two fights play out first. We'll see what happens and how it goes. I mean, I was on Twitter. I made it pretty clear I wasn't too excited about the fight, you know. Um, when you, when you get these fights where guys talk shit and a lot of stuff goes back and forth, those fights always suck. It really, they really do. Um, I, I think that you know, for Ellenberger to go out and say he doesn't deserve to be in the top ten, and then not go out and try to prove that he doesn't deserve to be in the top ten, Ellenberger literally did nothing. He, his punch stat was close to zero, and uh, you know he, he he shot in like the second round maybe one time, and and and. Uh, 
he just literally did nothing. And in, and, and in my opinion, Rory didn't do anything to try to go in and finish him and try to, you know, to put a stamp on it and make a statement, not only to the world, but, you know, to the guys who are in that division. So that's why people booed and that's why people were, you know, not too happy about the fight. It was, it was a highly anticipated fight that actually overshadowed the main event and didn't live up to the hype. Uh, Robbie Lawler, congrats on, on the victory tonight. It's, a lot of people are talking about the renaissance of you tonight, and uh, you know it's great to see it for a lot of hardcore fans that have been around the sport for a while. Um, you know, everyone's talking about Rory right now, and I know, Dana, you've mentioned it. Maybe it's an idea to have a guy like Lawler and Rory fighting. I mean, what do you think of the idea for yourself? Uh, I'm going to fight whoever they put in front of me, and I'm ready to go. So uh, talk to Dana, talk to Joe Silva and my manager, and we'll figure out who I'm fighting next. Do you like that idea, Dana? Yeah, I mean, Lawler's, listen, Lawler's been a fun fighter since the day he walked into this organization. And uh, the, 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 the difference between Robbie Lawler now and Robbie Lawler then is obviously he's older, more grown up, and, and more importantly, his head is in the right place. You know, Robbie in the old days was a completely different person. He was just like, eh, I don't care. He didn't care about anything. Now he cares, you know. Uh, he's a completely different fighter. When I saw him on... Uh, Friday or whatever he was already or uh, Thursday he was already close to weight he didn't have to cut a lot of weight like like in the old days w w when he would fight um, you know he's, he's just mentally and physically a completely different person so I'm happy for him I'm happy to have him back and he's always fun I didn't answer your question but you, you, there you go <laughs> hey it's for John um, you were telling us the other day on Thursday that you'd expect to me chase chase uh, Johnson around the, the around there a little bit and did, but that wasn't the case. What, did you expect him to be that aggressive, especially that early, and going for going for the takedowns? Um, you know, I, I don't remember exactly how aggressive he was. I, I remember I, I was feeling at the first round, I was feeling like uh, I had things going my way until he he got his takedown, and uh, I don't I don't really remember him feeling that he was aggressive. So I don't know. He did a good job of uh, controlling me though. I wanted to give uh, Jake a, an opportunity to talk about his performance, especially with you know the comments that, that Dana just made. It, he said that you did nothing. Do you feel the same way? I mean, can you just talk about uh, what happened out there? You know, I'm just really uh, you know more disappointed in myself. But uh, you know, it's been it just didn't wasn't my night. You know, didn't have a good night and, and uh, didn't didn't pull the trigger. So I, I really have nothing to leave it at that. You know. And just one more, if you don't mind. I mean, do you respect the way that the Rory fought? Were you okay with his game plan coming into the fight? Well, you know, I, I respect uh, the fact that so much strategy goes into into a fight. But um, you know, Rory's been very, very respectful and, and, and uh, re re very respectful to me. But uh, like I said, I'm just I'm, I'm very disappointed in myself. It seemed like the uh, flyweight title fight was well received. You know, there was cheering throughout the entire thing. There was a lot of action. Is, is there a challenge now to, to keep coming up with contenders now for for Demetrius? It seems like he's just made a second defense, and already he's kind of like in a situation where he'll be looking at, at rematches, guys he's already fought before. Is that kind of a challenge with a new weight class like that? Yeah. It's, so are you saying that Demetrius cleaned out the division? People, People keep the, the reporters keep asking me, you know, like, uh, you know, When's, there, when, when's he going to get the respect he's due? When's it, I think he's earned the respect he's due. You just said he cleaned out the division, and what's next for him? doesn't look like anybody for him to fight out there. And, you know, the, the, the kid, uh, he really proved himself in that last Dodson fight. I mean, that was when he really did it for me. He was, he was in deep water. Dodson, Dodson is one of those guys who hits hard and is fast and as athletic as he is. And uh, he overcame those big shots and, and ended up turning that fight around. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I think he's I think he's one of the best in the world, man. He's unbelievable, and tonight he he proved it. He he looked he looked he looked amazing. So I don't know. I mean, I I don't know what to say to that, other than uh, you know we had the same question with Anderson and and uh, and GSP, and I'm sure there's going to be somebody for him to fight. Mind just saying one one thing about that. I mean, when you look at the landscape of 125 pounds, are you excited? Or I, I know that earlier this week I wasn't here, but I heard that you spoke about even potentially moving back to 135. Can you talk about just the landscape of flyweight division right now? Yeah, um, 
I beat, you know, the best of the best of the five-way division, and there's still, you know, up-and-coming fighters in there. You know, I know there's some key matchups coming up pretty soon. You know, Louis Gwynn is fighting somebody. Um, so there's there's still a couple of flyweights out there that I haven't fought yet, and I wouldn't mind fighting them, whatever the UFC wants me to do. But I think everybody's focused on, you know, Anderson Silva, GSP, and all those guys. But I think, you know, we can make some fun super fights down at, you know, the lighterweight division um, with the flyweights fighting the bantamweights. You know, I know the bantamweights, they have their thing to, you know, fix out, and we'll see what happens. You know, I'm just here to fight and have a good time and put on, you know, a good performance for the UFC and the fans. So neither one of us answered your question. <laughs> well, well, just to follow up for Dana, are you interested in that kind of super fight for Demetrius? Listen, if, if Demetrius came and said that he wants to, uh, you know, wanted to fight one of, one of the, you know, the champion at 135, I, I don't know. I'd have to talk to to our, uh, our matchmakers and see what they think, what they want to do. I don't hate the idea. And for Demetrius, would that be at 135, or do you want that to be a catchway type of thing? Um, as right now, I'm just throwing it out there. Like, you know, you hear GSP and those guys, and I think it's awesome. And I just think there's fights to be had at, you know, super fights to be had at, at the lightweight division. And you know what? Dana White always says, you know, GSP and Andrew Silva and John Jones, you know, it's going to be great fights, but they're going to make a lot of money. So I'm just <laughs> like, you know, I'm just throwing it out there for the lightweight guys and see what happens. <laughs> just, just throwing it out there now. <laughs> I'll interest you more. Um, they're both interesting, you know. Brow, he he's a big one. They're both big 135ers. I think Dominic Cruz has a better wrestling. He has a better footwork and movement, and he's shown that he can go all five rounds. And I fought him uh, before. Hannah Brow is tough. He finishes his guys, and he's more dangerous, you know, just because he goes out there and he goes out there for the kill. So, like I said, that's just something to throw out there. I, I'm still focused on my flyweight division. I know there's uh, up and coming fighters who are trying to come and take what's mine, and I'll be there to defend it. But you know, for the fans, and if the fans want to see it, and Dana White likes the idea, and the matchmakers want to do it too, well, I don't see why not. I don't mind fighting. It's what my job is to do is to fight. Hey, Liz, um, how much? Sorry, over here. How, how much trouble were you in there at the end of the end of the first round? Uh, I honestly, I felt safe. Um, it wasn't deep, but she was over my chin. It was just a matter of I couldn't get my head loose. And as tiny as she was, trying to get her hands free was just really difficult. But I felt safe, and I, and I knew I had it in the end. No. And uh, what's next for you, do you think? You know, what do you, is there anybody out there you, you want to face? And I'm, just, I'm, sure, I'm sure Rousey's one of them. But any, any, anybody else out there that really intrigues you? Oh, really, anybody they put in front of me. I'm just glad to be here and glad to keep fighting for them. Whatever they want to give me, I'll face any opponent. A short follow up for, for Liz. Did you, did you feel more comfortable in there? I'm over here. It's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you feel more comfortable in there this time around? I felt really comfortable the first time, too. It felt at home. But I think just the more experience you get, the more comfort you feel. And that certainly was the case this time. And do you think you're, the next fight could be a title shot? Is this something that you think uh, gets you there? Or do you, do you want to fight a little bit more if you have to wait? I don't, I don't care if it's tomorrow. If I have to wait, whatever it is, I'm, I'm always getting for the title. And uh, for Dana, sorry if this is a, 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 any redundant at all, but do you have a, like a timeline uh, for, for Dominic's uh, return, Dominic Cruz's return? Any more specific, concrete timeline about when he might be back and what you guys are doing? I don't. It's it still kind of an it's been redundant for the last two years, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. My answer is redundant, too. Right. But it's still that he's keeping the belt. He's got the belt. Right. Well, then, then we had a situation where him and Barat were both hurt, you know what I mean? So. Right. Yeah. How do you feel about the turnout tonight in Seattle? You guys did it uh, in the summer this time. You, the, last, the past two times you tried uh, December and then March the uh, first time around. Uh, how do you feel about the Pacific Northwest market? Love it. I mean, it's, it's always been great to us up here. That's why we keep coming back. Um, yeah. And we actually got some nice weather here this time. Thanks. Uh, for Jorge, you, uh, you talked this week about really enjoying the fact that you're staying active, second win now in the UFC. Um, finish right at the end of the second round. Can you just talk about your performance a little slow out of the gate in the first, but turned it on in the second? Talk about uh, what you'd like to do next and if you'll put that junk food binge up, sort of on the side to, to stay ready and stay active. Well, I definitely want to stay active. If, uh, if I could fight, the sooner the better, you know. It's, it's best for me. I, I like being in the gym, you know. And um, I just, uh, he caught me. It wasn't that I came in cold. I thought he was going to take a shot, and he just threw a good shot and caught me. I thought he was going to go for a shot when he did the level change, but... um. Nah, I didn't come in cold, you know. I felt great. 
Lightweight's one of the deepest divisions. Is there anybody that you look at now as sort of a next opportunity or just wait and see what the bosses have to say? Uh, any any top 10 guy would be amazing, but as, as long as I stay active, that's the most important thing. I just want to fight within the next two to three months, you know? That's the main thing I want to do. That it? You guys done with us? No? Uh, DJ, I just had a question for you. Uh, I know midway through the fifth round, I think you were like 10 for 10 in takedowns. Did the success of that and did that really surprise you or was that kind of your strategy coming into the fight? Um, it, I don't want to say surprise me. I'm just going after the fight. Um, John Margaret does a good job of staying in, in a shell where when you try to engage him, he likes to back up and throw the left lead hook. And that's what we saw. That was one of his good tendencies that he did to all his previous um, fighters. And so um, when he would try to engage, I can just change my elevation and see what happens. And then the shot was there. So I just took it and I passed guard and then started working, you know, uh, crucifix. And then when I started going for the far arm for the Khmer, it just so happened to be there. So. Um, it worked out perfect tonight, and I'm happy with it. She's coming, John. I can just go on count over there. No, no, no. Uh, for Masvidal, if I could, please. Just one quick follow-up. I know, obviously, there was this was kind of a personal matchup for you, but it was a great fight. Case I thought had a great performance. Did he gain any respect from you at all, or do you still feel the same? Oh, no, I, I gained uh, a lot of respect from him. I hit him with some good body shots in him. Uh, I ain't got no hard feelings toward him. We we talked backstage. I think I thought it was a great fighter before the fight. You know, I was just telling it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I think he's tough as hell, man. Even more now after the fight. Great. And if I could for uh, for Mr. Moraga as well. Um, you know, I, right after the fight, we, we saw you in the corner. You were you know kind of frustrated with yourself, obviously. You know, and and, and again, uh, you know, just disappointed, of course. But it was a fantastic fight, and, and I think it took the best out of Demetrius to beat you. So, I mean, can you tell us what it is, you know, what you were so frustrated about, and if there's any moral victories at all that, you know, people that didn't give you a chance, it took a, a hell of a fight to put you out? Um, it was just the fact that um, some, of the, some of the stuff that I got beat with today, we, we trained to do, to do certain things in those situations, and I, I didn't get it done. So I'm frustrated. And can you say, I mean, was it the moment that overwhelmed you a little bit? Was this whole situation, you know, it was new to you, doing the media, being the, the headliner and all that. Was it was it tough or was it just a just fight? No, it was just a fight. Uh, you know, he just, he he, uh, he he had me in certain positions for longer than I needed to be. And, and I just wasn't doing what I needed to do. And I, you know, I, I just frustrated with my performance. So I'm disappointed. And just one last one for Dana. I know you said that you were a fan of this kid coming in. I mean, what, what did you think? Did you think uh, you know he's somebody that looks like he'll still be around even though he, he lost tonight? Yeah, no, I told him. You know, he's a tough kid, and he brought it tonight. And, uh, you know, they went five rounds. He, uh, he hits hard. Demetrius is fast, man. He's, the guy's talented. The guy is incredibly talented. He, he's fast. His takedowns are, are on point. I mean, just – and as good as he is, he couldn't have fought a more perfect fight tonight. Then he gets his nose broken at the end of the round. And then, well, it looks broken. Uh, and uh, blood is gushing out of it, right? And he could have easily just ground out a win. And he goes for uh, uh, an arm bar to put himself in a dangerous position against a very dangerous guy who, who knows he needs the knockout to win this fight and, and, and goes for the arm bar. You know, it's just he couldn't have fought a more perfect, on-point, amazing fight tonight. And, you know, uh, he looked amazing. So uh, nothing to take away from this kid. He's a tough kid. Any other questions? Thanks for your support. We appreciate it, everybody. Have a good night.